Hello, welcome friends, and welcome to the Lioness Method podcast for female business entrepreneurs, female business owners, entrepreneurs, and leaders who are passionate about growing their leadership skills, building amazing teams, and solving real life problems with a growth mindset. I'm your host, Narissa Sue, and today we have the pleasure of uh, speaking with the amazing April Beach, and April is an online business scaling strategist and the founder of The Sweet Life Company. She works with entrepreneurs and small businesses looking to launch and grow their company for profit, purpose, and impact through her consulting courses, masterclasses, mastermind, and top-rated Sweet Life Entrepreneur podcast. April leads business owners through proven strategies for predictable results and has worked with top industry leaders to develop scalable signature programs and online business models to grow brands internationally. She has been featured in MSNBC, Today, Fox News, and the New York Times, as well as the Denver Business Journal and publications like Patagonia Magazine, 5280, and Austin Women's Magazine. April has become the go-to resource for online business growth for entrepreneurs who want high profit, deep purpose, and lifestyle freedom. Welcome, April. Thank you (laughs) for having me. It's kind of so weird sometimes when you're listening to somebody read those things about you. Um, It's not very often I, I hear that read, so thank you for having me. Yes, and what what an intro! I mean, oh my gosh, there is so much just in that uh, in, in that intro that I can't wait to dig into, and uh, so many things you've achieved that um, I know that our listeners are going to be really excited to hear from you, especially uh, this concept, this amazing concept where you're talking about really creating a lifestyle brand, and so let's dig in. Good. So, yes, I'm ready. Amazing. Uh, so let's just start at the beginning as far as uh, who you serve and, and kind of how you serve them. Great. Um, well, currently I own four companies, but primarily when it comes to scaling entrepreneurs, we serve businesses to design, launch, and scale their companies online. And we do so in such a way that helps extract their ideas, their genius, their assets. And we have a lot of companies that come to us that have done a lot of things, but they really want to nail what I call strategic business design. So we help them create their suite of offers and we help them create transformational signature programs that equal high profit, but lifestyle results that also are guaranteed to give a transformation to their clients and students. Wow, I I love that so much because um, as you just mentioned, I mean, there's so there's so many coaches out there right now that are building out challenges and programs, and they're kind of just doing it on their own, right? Just muddling through it. And I love what the whole concept of really having is a more strategic vision and something that's scalable. Um, how did how did you come to to uh, find this as one of your areas of genius? Because it sounds like you have many with four companies. But, but for this vision, <laughs> how did you come to this? Yeah, so um, I have a very unique history. I feel very blessed because of the way I grew up. So I was raised by the first wave of really lifestyle entrepreneurs. And so I learned at a very young age from my parents to design businesses for lifestyle results first, and then engineering the company in order to give what we wanted. So um, as an example, when um, when we wanted to surf more, we launched surf shops in California and Hawaii. When we wanted to play beach volleyball more, we opened up the first beach volleyball store in Santa Barbara. And so I always learned how to literally look at the lifestyle end result and then engineer the business behind in order to actually get there. So I have a very unique um, perspective. I've never worked for anybody else. I've been a business coach, officially a business coach since I was 21 and I'm 45 now. And so my area of expertise is engineering programs and businesses and business models that are guaranteed to give lifestyle results. So that's a very long story, um, (laughs) compact. And um, my area, like my superpower is truly taking your thoughts, taking your ideas and helping you put them into 
amazing industry leading transformational programs. And so that that's my, that's my superpower, but in a way that's going to give you that lifestyle that you want with giving your customers the end results that they want and need. That's amazing. And there, there's so many things in there I have questions about. Um, I guess the first one is, is 21. That That's amazing. So what was your first business? How did you get started? Yeah. So um, so to give a little bit more insight in this, I've actually, I moved out of my own when I was 13. And so I've lived on my own since I was 13. And, and I had this amazing childhood growing up and still very great relationships with my parents. Um, but for one of the reasons and so like i have this great god big picture i see now my mom left and so i found myself on my own at the age of 13 and so i started kind of feeling my way through designing my life the way that i wanted it and um started uh answering lots of questions for small businesses. I, I left high school and took off to Costa Rica with a backpack and a surfboard and a one-way ticket in 1994 before anybody was going down there and, you know, was, was talking to people down there about how they could grow their businesses when American surfers were first starting to go to Costa Rica. And so I started realizing that I had answers that other people didn't have. And so kind of fast forward, yeah, you know, I had my stint of waiting tables and bartending, came back here to the United States and just happened to be in the right place at the right time, asking the right questions and found myself in an opportunity where I was asked to consult on the development of a new hybrid custom business model for um, a national, it was a chiropractic chain at the time. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. But because I came from a very unconventional business design background, I had an 11 month contract to help them build out a custom business design. And, and I was eight, I was 21, literally. I had absolutely no, what I was doing, no idea what I was doing, um, but it was such an amazing experience. And I've been consulting companies ever since. I, I love that story. That's, it's so inspiring. <laughs> and it. And I think it's such a testament uh, that a lot of the entrepreneurs that I speak uh, with, they have kind of a similar uh, voice where they're like, I had no idea what I was doing and I jumped anyways, right? It's almost like that, um, the Indiana Jones movie where he's, he has to walk out into nothing and, right. he, and all of a sudden the invisible stairs appear, right? Right. I remember that scene. Yes, that is. That's like, yeah, that's exactly what it was like. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I just have a, I have a different viewpoint and a different vantage, uh, vantage point than most people have and exactly what that looks like. And not just, you know, a lot of business coaches say, you know, oh, design your business to live your life. But the difference about what I do is I, I have the tangible tactical strategies in order to actually do that. Um, and that's what I teach our clients. I love that. And how, how do you, um, for the listeners, for the ladies that are listening right now that are kind of right in between that they're maybe making six figures right now and they're looking to grow their business up into that next level, what are some actionable things that are some pieces of advice that, that you have for them? Right. I love this. I love this place that they're in because there's so much opportunity here in order to really lean into design because you've, you've gotten past those painful, you know, first years or months or however it was to kind of hit that first six figures. I swear to you guys, it's so much harder to hit that first six figures than it is to hit seven and eight figures. <laughs> you know, once you've, you've done that, you've been tenacious, you've done that. And so now you're in a, a really um, amazing place where you have a chance to design that. And so the way that we approach that for clients when they're ready to scale, it's not just necessarily scaling, it's how we scale. And so what I recommend is, first of all, really going back to those first steps, those first strategies that we all know is truly starting with that end in mind. What do you want to be known for? How involved do you want to be in your company? What is that every day kind of week or month or, you know, routine that rhythm looks like to you in five years from now? And when I have clients come to me, they've created like a lot of things already. They have courses or services. Some of them have a podcast and there, there isn't a master plan. They've done a great job to get there. But now you're in this place where 
you have the ability to create this master plan. And so I really recommend you start with what that looks like in the end. And then we go back and then we reverse engineer that taking into consideration what you really want that to look like. And when we talk about five years down the road, it, you know, the women listening are all in different phases in their life, but a lot happens in five years. And so you do still have the You could be a whole new back. person in five years, right? Right. And I, <laughs> whole think new lot, person. right. I think a lot happens to us also like in the seasons of life. So for example, if you have children or, you know, if you're just getting married or whatever it is, I know five years down the road from now, all my kids are going to be out of high school. And so my business design five years down the road now looks totally different than it did 10 years ago when I was designing it. So it also takes into consideration the seasons of life and, and how we want to wrap our arms around and harness who we are as individuals and what what we are believe that we are here to do. And I, and I think that's an important part. So when we talk about scaling, it's starting with the end in mind and really diving into what that everyday flow and operation looks like. And then I actually just recorded a podcast. My next week's podcast is all on this in detail. And then the next step is creating that suite of offers and really understanding that we've created a client journey so that you know clients are going with you from the beginning to the middle to the end and you're keeping clients for a really long time. We have clients that work with our business have been clients for over 11 years because we have that journey of those programs to keep getting them to grow. And so that's an important part. And then taking it a, a step further, kind of back to where we are like today and saying like, okay, what do I need to do here in the next 90 days? What does this look like? What is this next level? level, scalable signature program that I need to design, but knowing how that one brick fits into the whole big picture and um, having a, a really special opportunity to do that. We want to make sure that you're building and designing something that is in fact going to equal what you want it to. That's it. I love that. And I, I, one of the things that I hear as somebody who um, I know on the Colby test, I'm more visionary. I'm not I'm not the person that can actually build out the plan. So everything that you're saying to me makes so much sense. And it sounds so attractive because for, I think the listeners that are listening right now too, you, you're probably not good at maybe putting together the 90 day plan with all the nuts and bolts. So what uh, an amazing opportunity to work with somebody like you that can actually dial it in and you have a proven strategy. Um, so I guess my next question would be, um, so for the women that uh, want to work with you, like what would they need to have in place or what is your ideal uh, client look like? Like how, what do they need to get started to work with you? Like what place do they need to be in their business with their mindset, with their goals, finances, that kind of thing? That's a great question. So we actually have two divisions of our company. We have the launch division where we take uh, even established entrepreneurs, but they're just starting to go, whether it's offline to online, they've had a practice. I mean, we work with, you know, CPAs and attorneys and experts that have been doing things and they're just kind of going into the launch online. And then the second is that scale business, that company that is really ready to scale more online. And here, here's the common thread, wherever, whether you're in the launch phase or the scale phase, um, our clients have a ton of amazing ideas. And many of them, like I'm sitting here with notebooks, like they have notebooks all over their house of things they've done and ideas they've had in the middle of the night. And they have notes on their phone and text messages in, in Google Sheets and millions of things they've downloaded and created and manifested both in their mind and then physically out in the world. And so our clients come to us when they have frankly done a lot of things mentally and then sometimes even bringing them into the world and they're they're lacking that master what i call strategic business design plan mm. and they're ready to stop messing around you know <laughs> just really like i'm i'm ready for this i want to make sure the work i'm doing is in fact going to equal what i want it to do financially lifestyle wise and for my clients and my students and so that's really the point when clients come to us when they're really to take it ready to take it to the next level and our clients are disruptive they don't want to do things the way everybody else is doing them they don't want to just launch a course because everybody says, you know, it's time to launch a course. They don't want to just do uh, things that fit into a box. Our clients are um, very disruptive thinkers, but not disruptive to, in order to just disrupt. They really, truly are stopping and they're saying, I want to do this differently 
for me and for other people. And they do, they, but they do kind of, they're also the same type of women that are like, but I, I want to ruffle the feathers a little bit, not to create friction, but to say there is a better way. And those are the clients that come to us that need help. We literally, I say, I, we turn your thoughts into reality. I have a process where we extract your ideas, your genius, what you've created, what you want to create, and put it into a strategic plan. I love that. I can feel that. We're like, create the fiction that makes the yeah. excitement mm -hmm. and gets that fire burning for that passion for what you're really creating. And it sounds like you're really co-creating uh, with your clients uh, something beautiful and effective. Uh, so I hear a lot of in what you've shared so far about adaptability. It sounds like you have really had to roll with the punches through evolving through all these different businesses. And uh, so can you share a little bit about your adaptability and how that's played a role in your success? Right. Yes, I definitely will. I love that question because I think that there's so many women all the time we're in a place where we're like feeling like adapt and I have to change to this and there's something wrong with this. When in fact, the most creative genius comes out of times when we have to adapt. So here's a really good example. Um, I launched our first online courses back in 2008 before anybody was even talking about online courses. As a matter of fact, we even launched a course on how to create an online course in 2009, which was probably the first one ever out there. But I didn't do it because I had like something. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a great idea. I'm going to own the world and online courses. I wasn't it at all. What it was is I had three baby boys at home under the age of four years old and one of them with severe food allergies, which wow. literally at the point, I couldn't even take them into a grocery store. So mm -hmm. I went from having these successful businesses to all of a sudden my world became very, very small, very fast. And I had to figure, and my business was exploding. We have clients in over 17 countries. And I was literally like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? And it was out of that struggle that came the solution of then, things were so duct taped together back then. And then <laughs> It was like Cisco WebEx connected to like constant contact. I mean, it was, it was <laughs> oh like, no, constant like, contact. Oh, right. It was like this old school, like people, were, we didn't even have the word funnels then. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. um, but that came out of a really, really tough time, like as a businesswoman, as a mother with these three human beings that, you know, are the most amazing people that I know now. Um, but it came out of the fact that I couldn't leave the house. My business was exploding. I had very little time. I didn't have childcare at the time. My husband was a, it was an executive for a, a restaurant chain. And, and if you guys have ever been in that, that means he's gone like 90 hours a week. So I had to figure it out. And so when we're talking about adaptability, whether it's what's happening in our life or whether it's what's happening, like just in the marketplace, I think. I think adaptability is one of the greatest gifts that we can have. And that helps us see the, the ways we need to disrupt and do things differently that are both going to work for us and for, and for our people. Wow. That's, that's amazing. And I'm hearing so many different things that I'd love to touch on. Um, and thank you for sharing that. Uh, so it is really hard to be a working mom, uh, for sure. Was there ever a point where you felt like you had to decide between your your family and your career as a woman, or was that ever on the table? Like, what's your feeling about that for the women that are listening? Because I get that a lot. Like, oh, do I? I, I should just be a mom, right? And maybe oh. I feel guilty if I'm if I'm out there pursuing my dreams and building my business at the same time. God, there's so many things I want to say to that. Okay try to answer as clearly as possible. Um, first of all, my mom was an entrepreneur. She was a creator. So oh, I, I love that. that. I don't know how to do anything different. She creates the most amazing things. Um, and it's, it blows my mind, the things that she has done. Mm -hmm. So I've never worked for anybody else. I've never worked in a nine to five. Um, so me personally, I just don't have any desire to, to leave my kids or leave leave the house, right? You know, wherever I am, I've, I've always done that. I've always worked on the go um, and or work where I've wanted to from where I've wanted to. Um, to answer the question about if I ever had to choose, um, I, I've strategically engineered my company 
to always be life first. And that's really the whole conversation we're having. And so because of that, I've never, ever, ever had to choose. However, with that being said, well, and I'll just say like, as an example, if you're looking at my wall here, I have an entire wall of, I should show you guys, my office is a mess. See, so you're going to see like a back. <laughs> see my wall, everybody? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> I'm really going to show you behind the scenes here. Um, mm -hmm. I, the very first thing I do when I design our year is I lay out the times we travel and I travel four to, four to six months on average a year. I'm usually always on a plane. Um, with so my that, kids, that whole mentoring. wall is an entire year? So yeah, the whole wall is an entire year. And it first I'd mark off our travel. What we're doing as a family, things that are happening with my kids is the very first thing that gets blocked off. And then um, the different colors are our programs, our masterminds, our offers that we do in the process of we weave those in after, only after what works best for my life. And this is the way we've done it for 12 years. Mm -hmm. And so it always starts with that first. So I've never had to choose. However, um, with that being said, I don't agree with the word balance. You know, there's always this conversation around work-life balance and maybe it's just me personally, but what works for me is that um, I work really, really well dived in to one thing in like a scrum really hard. Like I go hard and then I stop. I go hard and then I stop. <laughs> and so um, I don't feel like with balance, something always has to be given up. Whereas I intentionally choose what I'm going to be focused on. Like when I'm traveling with my kids, like I'm there. Um, but some trips, like you guys who follow me on Instagram, like I always have my laptop with me. I'm always like on the side of a lacrosse field somewhere. Um, and so I, I built my business so I don't have to choose, but there are definite times where like my boys know, like mom's in a launch and I am MIA for sometimes 10 days. And so, but that is very intense intentionally designed. And I love that. I love what I do. I'm not, if I wasn't doing what I loved and like doing what like made me totally get fired up, I would be a miserable human being to be around. So what I want in what I do is of, of utmost importance, just as the way I engineer our companies so that my boys get to do what they want and that they, they all have their own actual businesses and they all have their things that they do as well. So hopefully that answered that question. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that was very thorough, and I I love all of that, and especially that you had such a, a an amazing example, your mother as an entrepreneur, and I think that's a huge point for us to to really uh, point out to the listeners, is that you know if you're a, a mom that is building your business, then it it really is uh, up to us to be the example, right? To create the example of going after your dreams and embodying all the things and going out there. Cause that's what we're going to, te we're teaching our kids to go out yeah. there and go after our dreams. And they're going to always do what we do, not what we tell them to do. Right. So I love that you're telling this story of your life of that. Your mom was the example and now you are the example for your boys and the women that are listening can be the example for their kids. Well, and, and not so to feel guilty more, about it. Yeah, no, not at all. Let me say one more thing that's really interesting, which I did not include there because this would take us on a totally different tangent. But <laughs> my, mom, my mom actually left when I was 13. So I've actually mm. lived on my own since I was 13. And okay. the reason why she left is because she never took care of herself. Mm. She always, she it was like, go, go, go all the time. The businesses, the surf shops, the doing all the stuff for me and my sister and horses and dance and all this stuff. And she never put herself as a priority. And so my mom and I have a beautiful relationship today. And also the greatest lesson I learned from her is I am an asset and I have to take care of myself. Amen. So it was very, I, so I, it was almost like I got the best of both worlds. It's amazing entrepreneur, but then she totally like, you know, Mm. Hit this breaking point. So it was really, it's a, I have truly the best of both vantage points in that. I, I think that's another beautiful point that, that you bring up as well, as far as self-care, not being selfish. Like if, if we are going to be this, these super women out there creating businesses and how, and creating the life of our dreams, essentially for ourselves and our families, our communities, people that we affect and people we hire that our self-care absolutely has to be first. So what are some things that you do for yourself that would be self-care? Because I know some people think of self-care as, ooh, spa days and bubble baths, but it's not all of that, right? No, not for me. 
at all. Okay, this is really funny. And I, I'm not sure a lot of women can resonate with this because I do have a unique background. Um, coming from like the action adventure sports um, background, I am really into the outdoors. I'm always hiking or I'm always outside. I have to be in nature. I need like big sky to think clearly. So it's always about putting myself in vulnerable situations outdoors in order to remember who I am and, and how I'm tied to the earth and, and what I'm supposed to be doing here. So that is one way getting outside as much as possible. Um, but the other way for me is like really honing in spiritually to what I need and filling my soul that way. It is working out and it's having like this exercise regimen. So I thrive in putting myself in more extreme physical conditions. It's just the way I am. Like when I go, when I look for a vacation, when I look for a retreat, I'm never looking for like that spa type of experience. I'm looking for where can I set board? Is there cliff jumping? You know, are those <laughs> things like that? So that's just really I'm like, girl, I'm me. going on vacation. I'm girl, I'm going on vacation with you. That sounds amazing. <laughs> right. And you know, it's interesting too. Like that's how we plan our masterminds and our retreats. Is mm -hmm. it so I, just a side note, it's something that I've learned and I've studied over the years. When we put ourselves in physical situations that might be a little outside of our comfort zone, and then we come back to our retreat settings and we work on business development, our clients' confidence is through the roof. Their clarity is like crystallized because they have just done something that requires them to remember what they're made of before we dive into the business sense. So when we host these retreats, like you don't come to our retreat and sit there and ship on, sip on, you know, champagne and caviar. You come to our retreats to be in the ocean, to, you know, to be doing these things outside combined with business design and development for high profit and scalability. And that's just the way I'm wired. But that's also why women will hear me speak and your listeners are probably watching this. They're going, I either love April or no, no, no. I do not want to go to April's retreat. She's going to make me, you know, do something that that I don't want to do. So, no, I think you are speaking to the right audience. This, these are your people because we are definitely avid hikers and enjoy connecting with uh, nature. Because I think uh, what you're speaking to is, you know, connecting with nature is a spiritual experience, right? Mm -hmm. And and working out and eating well and just getting in full alignment, you know, mind, body, soul. And, and that is, I actually have a retreat that's coming up at the end of September. We're going to be doing some hiking at Joshua Tree, which I think is one of the most I spiritually. Tree. Oh. Yeah, it's so beautiful. Yeah, but there's no alcohol. It, it's vegan, plant-based diet. We have an Oh my gosh, store. you are my people. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring my hammock. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. It, it is at a beautiful, a beautiful retreat center. But yes, it's going to be an active adventure. So I think we're right in alignment there. Totally. I love that. That's amazing. Um, yeah. So um, I, what are some other things that you do that uh, help you maintain your clarity and inspiration for your mm. business? So I never lack inspiration. I think as a matter of fact, my mind is always, I actually have to like hone it in. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that is really important to me that I've learned, especially um, being on Clubhouse the last six months, and I, I just was sharing this in another interview, it's really interesting. And um, I definitely know now that I have ADHD. And I've never been actually officially diagnosed before. I used to have a woman who was our project manager about 10 years ago. And she used to say to me, April, if we could just medicate you, if we could just harness your brain <laughs> and put it in one place, we would just be so much more successful because I'm always, it's just like, tch, tch. but interestingly enough, in hindsight, I've realized that's why I developed these systems. That's why I have these frameworks. I developed the frameworks not for our clients. I developed the frameworks for me because I know how my brain works. I know it's like always catching all these things and then taking them into a process that's transformational and scalable. And so in order for me to get clarity, um, I have to be very, very careful of what I am allowing my mind to hear and how I'm hearing it. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it's been very hard because I've actually had to take five months off or five weeks off of Clubhouse in the last five months. But that's because when I get so much input, my brain cannot process. And so I have to learn to stop even when 
if you're looking at the marketing world, like it totally wouldn't make sense. Like you got to lean in and be in clubhouse all the time. But I realized that our companies are, need me to stop so that I can flow out and process and delegate and lead in, in order to, to produce. And so I've ha I have to be very, very careful to what I hear and how it's put into my mind so that I can take some time to be silent and process. And again, my greatest clarity comes from working out. When I go, when I can't think straight, when I can't process or make a decision, or there's so many things floating around, I have to get outside. It is literally the only way I get clear with nobody else, sometimes music, sometimes no music. And I just process and process and process and dump and process and dump. And it always comes from <laughs> oxygen, I guess, <laughs> from, from being outside or, or being in breathing. the gym. Yes. Being a, yeah, there you go. Breathing or breathing. being in the gym working out for sure. Mm -hmm. That's how I get clarity. I love that. Now, we um, we actually have a weekly breath work circle on Wednesday nights, and we have a lot of women that come in just for that purpose of gaining their clarity. And there is so much to be said about just breathing, right? Because when we're working out, we're breathing really hard. We're getting that oxygen flowing, and it, it really does do something in our body to just completely move out the stuck energy. So whether it's a practice of meditation or breath work or working out, uh, hiking, you know, I think that uh, all those things are, are great things for women to kind of take away. And I will also say my new favorite tool, this is so funny, is I take fermented mushrooms. Oh, nice. A big mushroom fan, ladies. Totally, <laughs> totally, not the psychedelic kind from my teenage years, mm -hmm. although that is legal here in Colorado now, but <laughs> it's literally fermented mushrooms. And it, I, I literally, when I take fermented mushrooms, my brain is clear. My mind is clear. Mm -hmm. Like it just flows through. It's amazing. I, I love that. Sure? Send me a DM. Yes. I'll send you a picture of what I use. <laughs> it's like, just send April a DM about, tell me more mushrooms. about mushrooms. Just, just, just send me a DM the word mushrooms and I'll send you a picture of the one I buy. It is yes. a, they are a game changer. I love that. Have you seen the Joe Rogan podcast with Paul Stamets? No. Oh my gosh, if you love mushrooms, I, you need to know all about Paul Stamens because he is like the mushroom man and not the psychedelic kind, but actually at the beginning of the pandemic, I was really concerned about my immune system. So I started doing a lot of uh, research and he's come up with this blend called My Community, which has over 17 different types of mushrooms. And it's something that I've taken throughout the whole pandemic and my immune system, knock on wood, has been solid and I feel really clear and really good, just like you were saying. So it's just beautiful, these plant medicines that we have from the earth that can right. really nourish our body and our minds. Right, I will look into that. My blend only has eight. Oh. I want 17. <laughs> 17, I mean, it's got turkey tail, reishi, like all the, all the yeah. things. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, awesome, thank you for that. I love that, that's a great, great gem to share. Um, so what part of your business have you been able to automate that's really been a game changer for you? Mm. Um, well, being that automation is is one of our areas of specialty, we've done a really great job automating. Um, in, in one company, I have 56 online courses. And so we've done a really good job automating that and making sure there's funnels and flows going into that. Um, and um, that works really, really well. I think the biggest part that has been a struggle, but it's also the best thing is automating our podcast process. Oh mm. my gosh. <laughs> you know, it, I mean, from the content in the guests and the repurposing of the, of all that that goes out everywhere that has been, we've been podcasting now for about four and a half years. And, um, the, you know, the show is finally, I mean, I, it, I guess it was, I have an amazing producer that helped me put that um, in, in play, but the show is, I would say now finally just flowing through after four and a half years and really we have the right team in place and making sure that we're getting the content out there beyond just the show. So that's, that's been the biggest thing for us um, as far as the, for me personally, the hardest thing to automate because it is massive amounts of content. Mm-hmm. 
No, it really is a lot. That's great. <laughs> so if, if you're listening and you need help with that, then you're welcome to be a resource. To, I don't even, yeah, feel free to hit me up. I'll just tell you the way we do it. I don't have a course or anything on it. I'll just tell <laughs> you Oh, uh, yeah. Which is another thing that I love about you. You have so many free resources that you are offering at entrepreneurs and people are just wanting to grow their business. Like you're so generous with your knowledge. And we also met on Clubhouse and I just have to say to the uh, to the listeners that April is such a powerhouse on Clubhouse. I mean, she is not only generous with the tools that she's sharing, but in the rooms, just really loving on people, helping them with their solve their their business issues, and that's just really something that I want to acknowledge you for. Um, Thank you. And- I love being in there and meeting people like you. I mean, look at this; the relationships are just so amazing. Mm-hmm. It's so much fun, yes. And you have and you have so many different resources to offer too. We have tons of resources. Uh, yeah. I can it like blows my mind that the free resources <laughs> actually. Um, yeah. yeah, it's pretty much it's pretty much ninety five percent of what we do we give away for free. I'm also a nonprofit founder, and so I'm really into making a lot of money to give a lot of money away. Um, mm. We actually have a whole entire business launch roadmap that takes businesses from design through scale and impact that we give away this course um, with a donation. It's a hundred percent donation based and, and it goes to one of the four nonprofits that we support. So I am really into, like, I know when entrepreneurs need me, they need me. They're going to come to me. They're going to pay me for mm-hmm. my expertise and they're going to work with my team. Um, 95% of the content gets them to that we give away for free, gets them to the point where I just know they can't go past that until they work with us. So I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, take it, go be awesome. <laughs> um, I didn't have those resources when I was trying to figure things out. And so mm-hmm. I, I think it's really important that people have not just resources because nobody needs more content. We need mm-hmm. transformation. And so trusted resources where, you know, you know, you can tap into them and you know, they're going to give you just results because they've been proven for decades. So those are even mm-hmm. with online business. So, um, yeah, mm-hmm. so I'm, take it all. <laughs> it's there for you to take. Well, and I, I think that's a wonderful point that you bring up because I think there are a lot of people that are, are all about gathering content, but then they don't do anything with it. Right. And that, that is exactly what you're saying is you need a coach to be able to elevate you to the next level, to get you to that transformation. So I definitely, I love what you do. And I wanna be mindful of our of our time. I know that you have an, another uh, meeting coming up and I just really appreciate you spending uh, this time with us. Uh, how can the listeners uh, reach you and, and find out more about what you do and contact your team? Thank you. Um, so the best place to chat with me if you guys are on clubhouse is just to follow me at april beach on clubhouse i would love to chat with you there and just turn on the bell and just say oh okay if i saw you in business podcast let's talk more um that's really the best place but sweetlifeco.com is our business and if you go to sweetlifeco and just click on our podcast in the top of our podcast website you can actually search anything you can start if you need a business training on marketing or funnels or websites or offer creation you can actually search and it will give you all our podcast or proven business trainings that other coaches charge thousands for that's what we're known for you guys can take them they're all step by step and i would literally invite you guys to dig into the podcast it's worth like i can't even i can't even quantify the trainings that are in that podcast and so i would just dig in and and find your resources there or you can always send me a dm on instagram at april beach life and just say if you want to work with us just say okay help let's set up a call um and we can share with you our master classes and our programs when you're ready for that level of development Amazing. Well, again, thank you so much, April. And I know that our listeners are are definitely be excited to reach out to you after all the value that you shared with us today. And if you're listening all the way to the end, we really appreciate you. Thank you so much for spending this time with us this afternoon. And as always, I would like to also invite you to our Wednesday night virtual birth, uh, breath, I almost said birth work. Oh my goodness. We are (laughs) Well, you will feel like you are reborn, so there would be some birthing involved at some times in breathwork. 
but it's a virtual breathwork circle every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And you can find it at uh, the sign up at breathewithrisk.com. Mm. So, yes. Amazing thing you do every week. Every week. It's so much fun. It's such a beautiful group of women that end up coming together from all over the world. We've had people wow. come from India, Canada, and just um, across the country. It's been amazing. An amazing thing. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. All right. Thank you guys. Until next time, stay kind, connected, and be light. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.